This is definitely outside of the norm because we are outside of the norm right now. There are, are many, many instances that have happened. There have been many instances that have happened within the past week and a half to two weeks. Sorry, I'm nervous. This is definitely not normal. But there have been instances that have happened that God's trying to wake somebody up. In fact, he's trying to wake us all up. Are you looking to the hills? Are you looking for his coming? Are you ready? Are you alert? Or are you fighting? The sergeant arrived late in the night on Wednesday, February 9th, 1893, when the county insane asylum burned to the ground, killing 41. Firefighters rode up, and it just, it looked devastating. And the paper said, tongues of flames leapt about the cremated remains of the insane. There were scenes of terror, the inquirer reported, and the blaze seemed to fill many of the demented people with ghoulish ideas. And women were seen to stand before the windows and make the most hideous faces, even while the flames tipped their cheeks. The cries of the doomed prisoners were mixed with the hideous laughter intertwined with the prayers and appeals for help. The lunatics on the second floor became frenzied, the New York Times reported. They laughed and sang and shouted while some of them sat stupefied and gazed with melancholy pleasure upon the appearing and approaching flames. Some were stupefied and bewildered. Others were wild with excitement and they were urged, driven, and dragged into another wing. But because their condition and the confusion, some ran back. Some ran to the place that they knew where they were comfortable, the place that they knew was safe. Some ran two times back. Some fought, scratched, bit, kicked, and ran back a third time. Many perished because of their continued returns to their rooms. Patients appeared in their windows, visibly trapped as the flames and smoke overtook the wings. What's the definition of insanity? Insanity is a mental illness of such a severe nature that a person cannot distinguish fantasy from reality, cannot conduct her or his affairs due to psychosis or is subject to uncontrollable impulsive behavior. They couldn't determine what was actually right at their, at their face. Their doom, their destruction was at their face. But they had always been comfortable before staying in that room. The ones that were trying to save them had wounds, scars. Some of them were punched, spat on, cursed, kicked, bitten. But they said, you, I don't care what you do to me. I care about your life. I initially thought of this as trying to reach the lost, but we are all fighting this fight within ourselves. This flesh does not want to pray. This flesh is outside of our minds. Galatians 5.16 says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. My thought tonight, your flesh is going to bite, fight, spit on and curse your spirit. It will fight you to the end, but there's something greater. There's something greater that's worth fighting for. Can we all stand? I don't want to run back to what I've always known. I don't want to go back to the things that I've always done because my eternity is on the line. I want to choose life today. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight?
Our hands for a moment. Jesus, you are the king of all kings. God, we submit ourselves right now to the flow of your spirit. We bind every spirit that is against you. We bind every spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. I bind every deceiving spirit in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, have your way in this service tonight, God. That's it, church. Step into it right now. I can feel the waters are stirring. Shake off everything that has jumped onto you. Shake off everything that has clung to your spirit in the name of Jesus. I am not afraid, God. I am not discouraged, Lord. I believe, Lord, that you are greater than anything that's in my way. I believe you're greater than any devil that has attacked me. And I know that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. I stand upon your word, Lord Jesus. I stand upon your word, O oh God. Oh, God, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is so strong in this place. Jesus, 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 you may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. I'm grateful for what we've already heard from Pastor, from Pastor Swan. The Holy Ghost is speaking tonight. I pray that you would take off any expectations that you have and that we would just go with what God wants to do. Very quickly before I begin, there is a marriage retreat coming up on Friday, February 14th through Saturday, February 15th. The annual marriage retreat coming up the 14th and 15th of February. I did not talk to Pastor. I did not talk to Pastor Swan. You already know that. But just in case there's somebody here who doesn't know, the Holy Ghost has been trying to get our attention Brother Wara, I appreciate so much what you spoke to us. I don't know if he's here tonight, but when he said he's trying to awaken us, he's trying to get us to wake up from our slumber. There are many things happening in this church right now. There are many things happening in your life right now. Spiritual attack, sickness, all kinds of confusion, it's happening, folks. Our church is under spiritual attack. The enemy would love to take you out. He would love to deceive you, and he will deceive you with self-righteousness. I'm leaving because of my pastor. I'm not praying because somebody offended me. I'm not participating because of this or because of that. Be very, very wary in the Holy Ghost. I'm the, we are in the flow of the Holy Ghost right now. Please hear these words. He will deceive you through self-righteousness. And when you detach from the Spirit of God and you operate in the work of God at the same time while you're under attack and you're under pressure, 
bad things happen. People get hurt, you get hurt. And we're all under a lot of pressure right now. Think about your average day. Maybe you haven't eaten. You're late for work. You're behind at work. You're overworked. You forgot to pack a lunch. You forgot to pack your kid's lunch. Your laundry basket looks like Mount Everest. The house is a mess. A loved one's in the hospital or sick. You haven't returned a growing list of calls and texts. Return those texts. People are wondering what's up. Your family needs you. Your friends need you. Your spouse needs you. Your kids need you. Your boss needs you. Your church needs you. Your pastor needs you. Your mentees need you. Your saints need you. But your body hurts. Your heart hurts. Your mind hurts. Your spirit hurts. Your schedule's crammed. Your car's busted up. There's cracks in the wall at home and leaks in the roof. And the bank account is dwindling. I heard a preach there. I don't know who that was, but God bless you with your finances in the name of Jesus. You feel inadequate. You feel stressed. You feel guilty. You feel numb. You are overwhelmed. Known as the father of stress, Dr. Hans Selle was an endocrinologist famed in the medical community for his groundbreaking research on the effects of stress on the human body. Dr. Selle actually didn't even mean to coin the word stress. In hindsight, he would have simply called it strain. The public's understanding has been that stress exists outside of ourselves and is to be avoided, which contradicted Selle's position. He posited that stress was unavoidable because it was literally a function of every adaptation to change. Even in our sleep, our heart still has to beat. We still need to breathe. Our adrenal system is still responding to dreams. We're still under stress. He told an interviewer for the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame, the opposite of stress is death. He said, it's not stress that kills us, it's our reaction to stress that kills us. Pastor Derek, if you'd allow me a little liberty with what you spoke on tonight, the picture I saw was, yes, our flesh fights against the spirit, but oftentimes our beings fight against our spiritual leaders, the word of God, the Holy Ghost trying to speak to us, preachers and teachers who are trying to get us to run away from that burning building. And because our, dis- our understanding of our reality is distorted, we are running back to things that are burning us alive. Your flesh will run this is in my notes, will run to something. I thank the psychology research I did online, and I thank Lily for her help. There is something called appraisal-focused stress relief. The relief that comes because your finances are so stressful to you. Your family situation is so stressful to you. Your spiritual situation is so stressful to you. Whatever it might be, we turn to a coping mechanism that detaches us from our reality and puts it away somewhere in the back of our mind as an escape. Every single human being does this. So I'm preaching to all of us tonight. Every single one. You can be in entertainment. You can be in compulsive spending or compulsive eating. 
You can be a self-mutilator. By the way, nail-biting, skin-peeling, lip-biting are all lower forms of self-mutilation that we don't even realize are our body's ways of dealing with the stress that's going on internally in us. You may turn to pornography. You may turn to drinking. It is a disassociation so that you can detach from the stress that's going on. And that's just for the average person. What about the person who's under the attack of devils? When you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, Satan wants to put your hide and your mount up on his wall. Hell hath enlarged itself. The masses are going in. But folks, let me tell you, he likes to point out the 12-point saint of God that used to pray and used to worship, used to fast, used to lead in worship, used to preach. Look at this one I got. He is after your soul. He's after our souls. And this can happen to all of us, folks. How much time are we spending in another world on our phones? Getting in everybody else's world so we can escape our own. How much time are we spending on Netflix? How much time are we spending watching sports? How much time are we spending doing anything we're doing? Whether subconsciously or not, we're trying to escape the pressure that is coming against us. But the reality is when you get out of everybody else's life, we still have our own lives to live. We're going to run to something I'm challenging us tonight and encouraging us to not stop running, but to just change the direction that we're running. Just change what we're running to. Because I'm here to tell you, as a pastor, as a preacher, who's, as somebody who holds license, as somebody who grew up in the church, none of that means anything. I'm here to tell you that just like you, I am tempted to run to things that appease my flesh and not confront what needs to be dealt with in the spirit. Psalm 61, beginning at verse number 2. From the end of the earth, I call to you. When my heart is overwhelmed and weak, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, a rock that is too high to reach without your help. For you have been a shelter and a refuge for me a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge in the shelter of your wings. I'm here to preach to us today. We need to stop running to the things that are appeasing reality and start running to the rock. The rock. You might think of a rock as just something you pick up with your hand and throw. But the rock that David's talking about is much bigger than that. He's talking about the top of a mountain. He's talking about a cleft in the mountain. He's talking about the rock that followed the children of Israel through the wilderness and supplied that life giving water to the people of God. 
See, a rock in ancient times was a powerful thing. If you had the high ground of the mountain, if you had the high ground of a mountain pass, you had the advantage. See, if your enemy came up to try and get you, you saw him coming. And likewise, if you were on the attack, you had the same advantage because you had the high ground. And the problem for many of us is that when we're dealing with all of the pressures that we're dealing with, we are running to things that actually take us lower than what we're already dealing with. But what God wants us to do is to run to a place that is safe, is to run to a place that brings strength, is to run to a place that allows us to see more clearly because where we're at right now, we can't see clearly. We're stuck down in the mud and we're stuck down in the weeds. But it's a rock that's higher than me. It's a rock that I can't get to by myself. Oh, hear me, I feel this in the Holy Ghost right now, that there's somebody here who's feeling like, oh, I'll come around in my time. I'll eventually make my way back around. I'll eventually get turned right and get to where I need to be. No, you won't, because you can't get there by yourself. The place you need to be in God, I got news for you. There's only one way to get there, and that's with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry, I don't know who's doing the video. I know I'm Prophet Hernandez right now, and I, uh, please forgive me, but just follow me while I go. You can't get there on your own. No. The rock that is higher than I. Hide me in the cleft of the rock. That's why I'm encouraged. That's why I'm encouraged. Because let me tell you about that mountain of God. It's way up higher than everything that's trying to take me out. It's way up higher than every lie that's trying to deceive me and every devil that's trying to discourage me and every sickness that I see around me. That rock. How do we get there? Folks, I know you're tired of hearing about it. There's only one way to get there, and that's prayer. But if you look at it as prayer, oh God, what do I say? What do I do? Do I get out my prayer clock? Folks, throw, I wish we'd throw every tradition out the window that's not of God. Our pastor just preached about it. We've got to know him. I was praying about what to preach, and there was, there's so much going on in my life right now, and the pressure just feels crushing. And I just buried my face in my carpet at home. It had been a while. It's been a while since I prayed like that. And I said, God, I told you. I said, God, forgive me. You, you know me, right? You, you understand where I'm coming from. I said, God, throw off being a hyphen pastor. Get rid of that. Get rid of mentoring. Get rid of all the stuff I got to do. Jesus, I just need to hide in your presence right now. Lift your hands. Oh, God. God, somebody needs to hide in the cleft of the rock right now. Lead them there, Lord. David said, lead me there, Jesus. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. 
You're a shelter, Lord. You're going to protect me. You're going to cover me from every fiery dart. Oh, you're going to allow me to raise up to a place, oh God, where I'm above everything, oh Lord, down on this earth that's trying to take me out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I just prayed like that. I said, Jesus, I just want to get back to knowing you. I just want to get back to loving you. I just want to get back to talking to you. And you know something? When you get in the presence of God like that, I don't care what you're facing. It disappears. And I'm going to tell you why. God is not overwhelmed. I said, your God is not overwhelmed. He's not taken aback by your circumstance. He's not surprised. God is not overwhelmed. What we need to do is get from being overwhelmed with what's overwhelming us and get overwhelmed with God. When you get yourself into the cleft of a rock, and that's a big old crack in the mountain, when you get yourself in the cleft of the rock, it overwhelms you. If you're claustrophobic, it's not going to be a good scene for you. You're going to feel overwhelmed. And that's what we need. We need to be overwhelmed with the presence of God. Recognize it. There are times where you're just going to have to, folks, we need to grow up. We do. We need to grow up. So often, we make emotional and heart-based decisions. You know how I know? Because every sales training I've ever been to tells you, get them to make the decision, appeal to the emotion. Now, there's a few rare breeds out there that you can't touch. They're ice cold. But for the other 99% of us, we make emotion-based decisions. I feel safe. I feel comfortable. I feel like this is going to be a great ex uh, investment. I'm going to get rich. It's emotion-based. But when it comes to living for God, we need to be, he didn't say be transformed by the renewing of your heart. He said be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because we need to recognize what's happening to us. What is happening to me right now in my situation? Because if we make decisions with our heart, we are going to go down a path that is not the will of God for our lives. And it may look good and it might feel good, but at the end of that road, ultimately, is a burning building that we just heard talked about. Lead me to the rock. And I confess before you, and I confess before my peers and my pastor that I was looking through things and through a perspective that was my own. Because when wave after wave after wave hit you and another wave hit me right before church and I stopped it and I recognized what was happening. I felt that, you ever hear news and that pang hits you in the chest? And it wants to, oh, it wants to, it, to, it just sidetracks you from whatever you're doing. And you can't stop thinking about it. It's in that moment that we've got to realize, wait a second, this is my heart. That's, God, this might have been a surprise to me, but it was not a surprise to God. This might be bigger than me, but it's not bigger than God. This might be too hard for me, but it's not too hard for God. This might be confusing for me, but this is not confusing for God. It's amazing 
how five minutes in his presence, five minutes, just five minutes in his presence is better than an hour of counseling, a day of counseling, a year of counseling. Isaiah 26, verses three through four in the Amplified, you will keep in perfect and constant peace, the one whose mind is steadfast, that is committed and focused on you in both inclination and character, because he trusts and takes refuge in you, in God. Can I tell you, you don't take refuge in the church. You don't take refuge in your pastor or mentor. You don't take refuge in your family. We take refuge in God. Stress and the things that are happening are a fact of life. And sometimes it's more intense than other. But when it's more intense than others, that just means you need to spend more time with God. I'll never forget Brother Stone King talking about schedule. And people say, I don't have time to pray. I'm too busy. Folks, when you have twice as much to do that day, we need to pray twice as long. That's what he said. When I've got more to do, then I've got more to pray. Verse 4, trust confidently in the Lord forever. He is your fortress, your shield, your banner for the Lord God is an everlasting rock, the rock of ages. You know, it's incredible when we go through something, how we feel like, we feel like it's, it's how can I say? Like it's the only, this is the first time this has ever happened. Oh my goodness. It's the first time it's happened to you. Well, let me tell you, there's a rock you can run to. That's the rock of ages. That rock is so high, it's, it's far above all powers and principalities. And I'm going to tell you, it was, he was the rock during the Assyrian Empire. He was the rock during the Egyptian Empire. He was the rock during the Persian Empire. He was the rock during the Grecian Empire. He was the rock during the Roman Empire. He was the rock during the British Empire. He was the rock at the beginning of the United States, and he's the rock right now. Everything you've been through, he's already seen it before. He's already got an answer for it. We are so temporary. And that this immovable, unshakable rock of ages. You see how he toyed around with Pharaoh? Hear me. You see what he did to Nebuchadnezzar? Who is coming into your life that's sent of the devil that you think God can't take care of and handle for you? You see what God did with the Red Sea? You see what God did all through the Bible? Friends, we need to go up to the rock because we need to start seeing clearly and we need to start hearing clearly and we need to start thinking clearly. That rock of ages. He's always going to be the rock. I can choose that he's not going to be my rock, but he's still going to be the rock. No matter what. I could, I could get on board or stay off board. I got news for you. God ain't getting off his throne, and his church is not going to stop being his bride. It's not going to stop being the apple of his eye. So I'm making a determination that I'm going to be a part of it, that he's going to be my rock. Enemy is after your mind. Because if he can get you to start thinking differently 
then he can start getting you to do differently. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I'm getting ready to close. I'm hoping there's a few people here who've kind of had a wake-up call that I need to run to the rock. Not run to my neighbor. Not run to this, run to that, run to this person, run to the social media, run to this. And some of us just want to run away. And guess what? You are running away. You're just doing it while you watch 10 hours of Netflix in a row. That's not an exaggeration, folks. 10 hours of Netflix? I used to do that in my sleep. I'm serious. Some of y'all know you watched a whole season in one day. I'm not playing tonight. Holy Ghost is coming for us. You're running. You're trying to escape reality of how hard life is. Life is hard. It's hard. But it's even harder when it's easy. And it's easier in this country, in this day, in this age, when we got every convenience and every comfort right at our fingertips. It's persecution in China and the Middle East, but for us it's Laodicea. And it's worse than persecution. It's worse than persecution. Because it doesn't take long. Somebody's coming after you to chop your head. You've got to make a choice. But when it's social media, and it's pornography, and it's money, and it's finery that's calling for you, it's a whole nother ball game. That's a whole nother ball game. Because you can die spiritually in silence. Yeah. Yeah. I want us as a body and as individuals tonight to hide. He said, hide me in the rock. Hide me in the rock. We need to be hidden in the presence of God. But not just hidden in the presence of God. Hidden in Christ. Colossians 3.3, 3, if you'll put that up there. Colossians 3.3. 3. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When we are hidden in God, when we are hidden in the presence of God, what happens when you're hiding? Nobody can see you. Now the enemy, can, he can attack you, he can do whatever he wants to, but he's on a leash. He can only go as far as God lets him. When I step outside of being hidden in Christ, I've stepped outside of the shelter of God and I'm on my own. But it doesn't have to be so. Believe it's Proverbs 18.10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs to it and is safe and set on high far above evil. Now, David had tapped into something way back then that he couldn't have known would be fulfilled spiritually when God would fulfill the covenant in a different way. And that is that he said, you're going to run into the name of the Lord. He couldn't have known that Paul was going to say, you're hidden in Christ. He was talking about a rock. But Paul tells us that that rock was Christ. So we need to be hidden in Christ. That's why we need to die to the flesh and we need to get hidden in Christ. It's, this, it's different language, but it's the same thing. When he says, I'm crucified with Christ, it's not I that lives, but it's Christ that lives within me. Run to Jesus. Just run to him. Why do we run away from him? It's because of that flesh. 
It's the same pattern that it's been since Adam. Adam, where are you? I'm hiding. We do the same thing. We want to hide from God, but we need to run to him. He's not your judge right now. He's your advocate. He's your savior. He wants you to hide in him. Why? So you're safe. So you're protected. So that when all hell is breaking through in your life, you don't lose your salvation. Stand with me tonight. We want to feel safe. We want to feel incubated. We want to, we want to feel protected from all of the things that overwhelm us. But we can't handle it on our own. We can't handle it with anything this world has to offer. The only thing is to run to Jesus. Hide in him. He's not going to condemn you. He's going to forgive you. There are people, I'm going to prophesy this right now, there are people in this room you haven't prayed in years. That's changing right now. Because the longer the time went by to pray, the harder it got to start your prayer life. That changes right now. The rock is there to protect you, is there to shelter you. He's not sending it down to crush us tonight. He's calling us. He's leading us to that rock that is higher than I. It's higher. It's a place that only God can lead us. How high is it? I don't know. But Paul said, he has seated us in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. He has set us far above. The enemy is far the scripture says. I'll never forget when Brother Sean preached that. He's not just beneath my feet. He's far beneath my feet. But if he can keep you down in the muck and the mire, it's going to make it feel like he's all over on top of you. When the reality is you need to be led to a rock that is higher than you, it's higher than every problem, it's higher than every sickness. And that enemy is far, far down beneath your feet. You're going to need a telescope to see that devil that's been harassing you. <laughs> Lift your hands with me. Jesus, God, you've called us tonight. You've called us, Lord. You've not called us to a ministry. You've not called us to go win the lost. You've not called us to go do anything else tonight except to be led to the rock. Lord, when I'm hidden in that place within your presence, nothing can touch me because nothing can touch you. And I'm wrapped up inside of you, Lord. I'm hidden with Christ in God. Nothing can penetrate my soul, God. You're calling us to that safe place right now, Lord. You're calling us to that strong place, God. You're calling us to that place that changes our perspective. You're calling us to that place that's so far above that we can see the long view where we can really see what's going on in the spirit. It looks like turmoil. God, it looks like things are going backwards, but we just need to realize that you're a chess player, God. You're not playing checkers. You're playing chess, and so sometimes it looks like things are moving backwards, but it's all part of your plan to say checkmate to the devils of this community. I want you to come. See the nail scarred outstretched hands of Jesus beckoning you to come, to be hidden in Him. 
He's about to renew your perspective. He's about to rearrange the things that you're declaring. Nothing else except being in his presence. Jesus, we heard it Sunday, I just wanna know you. I just wanna love you, God. Everything else will flow from that, Lord. A desire to reach the lost. God, a desire to minister, a desire to serve. That all comes as an overflow of being in you. Hide us tonight, God. Hide this church tonight. Lead this church tonight in the rock. Lead us to that cleft in the rock, oh God. That place where the enemy cannot penetrate. That place, oh God, where we are able to see the attacks, where we are able to move with precision, with authority, with understanding. That's all right. Reach out to him wherever you are. If you've been serving God for 50 years or 50 seconds, reach out to him. Come on, he wants you. He wants you. He's calling you. He's calling every single one of you. There's not one person here that he's not calling, that he's not leading to that rock. Every pastor, every teacher, every minister. <laughs> how are we going to lead others to the rock if we don't know how to get there ourselves? <laughs> In the name of Jesus, God, remove every condemnation, remove every fear, remove every hindrance, remove every obstacle. God, remove every excuse. You're about to strengthen some pastors tonight, God. You're strengthening some parents tonight, God. You're strengthening some students tonight, God. Come on, do you feel him leading you there? Do you feel him leading you there? It's higher than you. It's stronger than you. What a great God. What a great God. What a great God. The rock of ages. In Jesus' name.